So my name is Katherine Kuchenbecker. I'm an assistant professor of mechanical engineering and applied mechanics here at the University of Pennsylvania. I'm part of the GRASP Robotics Lab, and I focus my research on haptic interfaces. So touch-based interfaces for humans interacting with real environments or virtual environments like games and medical simulations, or a remote environment like a doctor doing surgery on a patient, um, either minimally invasive surgery in the same room or from far away. And so in all of these different kinds of interactions in my lab, we look for ways to make the haptic feedback, what the user feels, much better so that it is a more accurate representation of what you would experience in reality, either to make it easier to learn a certain task or to make the whole experience more fun in the case of games. So the Tactile Gaming Best began as a project in my graduate level class on haptic interfaces, touch-based interfaces. And I had two students, Sarah Palin and Royal Wang, who wanted to create a wearable device that would make movies and games more fun to experience. And uh, so I said, well, go out there and look at what already exists. And they found there was a company that made a product, it's TN Games, that makes a third space gaming vest. And all of a sudden they were like, oh, we can't do the project anymore because it already exists. And I said, no, no, no. Just because someone's done it once doesn't mean they've done it really well. And so we bought one of their vests and the students tried it out. And it's sort of like an engineer assessing a product, a, a, a certain solution to a problem that they've identified. We were able to find some things that that commercial product did really well and some things that we thought we could improve on, which is the perfect opportunity for a student project like this to really look for ways to make, in this case, games, first-person shooter games, more immersive and more fun to play. And the angle that we took on it was how could we make the haptic feedback, the touch-based feedback, what the player feels, um, more realistic. And so that's really what the students have focused on, and I think they've done a really great job uh, on that. I've been to a cinema ex experience where they're showing a 4D cinema which can give you simulation of what's going on in the screen. But that was a very naive attempt of doing that. They started with just one actuator and vibrating the entire seat when a train moves or something like that. And I wanted to make something which is more wearable. So we proposed that to professor for the class and uh, she agreed that we should try it. Some industries that might benefit from my research are medical simulation, so training doctors to do really challenging manual tasks on a computer simulation instead of on a real patient or also gaming, absolutely. So how can we make um, these entertainment experiences where we want to just have fun and experience some other environment, how can we make that seem more real? More than just graphics, we add sounds, and we also, what if that world could reach out and touch you and make you feel like it was real right there around you? Um, Medical robotics is another area that I work a lot in where we're trying to help a surgeon um, operate on a patient, really small structures deep inside the patient through a robotic system where as the doctor moves his or her hands, the robot tracks those motions. And we specifically work on the problem, how do you let the doctor feel what the robot is touching as it's cutting the tissue or as the doctor is suturing? It's really important that the doctor can feel exactly what they're touching. So these are a few examples. Um, one other example that we work on is just general human computer interfaces. Um, so for example, we have a tablet computing project where instead of just being able to point and draw on a tablet computer, which is a great experience, you can also feel some haptic feedback, some touch face feedback from the things you're touching. So as you stroke over different textures or click buttons, you get a nice confirmation or the right textures or sensations as you stroke these objects, just like you would feel if you were touching real objects. I had the idea for our gaming vest just purely um, based on the students' experiences playing first-person shooter games, what they thought it could be like. And we found there was a company that had something similar to that, but it fell short of our, our hopes for what this kind of experience could be. Specifically, we were looking at the quality of the haptic feedback, how it felt um, to wear this vest, how it felt when in the game you were shot, your character got shot and the, the students really felt that the sensations it delivered while they let you know where you were being shot, they didn't, it wasn't an authentic representation. Now, none of my students has actually been shot before, but I think they felt like it should be more impulsive, a stronger sensation. Startling, not painful, because we don't want to hurt the user, but definitely to, to startle you, because you, you get in, immersed in the game. And so this commercial product that we had tried, TN Games Third Space Gaming, that's clearly a pioneer in the field, but it just didn't deliver the quality of haptic feedback that we were looking for. And it was also a little bit limited. It was focusing on these impacts, and we also wanted to go beyond impacts. So an important other thing that the students added to this vest is vibration feedback. They added small motors uh, on the shoulders in the front and the back that give you the sensation of being slashed because there are clearly other things your character can experience aside from being shot. 
you might bump up into something in the environment or a character might come up and hit you. And so we thought it was important to portray the breadth of experiences of haptic or touch-based interactions your character could feel. We've also done some prototype work on heat feedback, thermal feedback, using Peltier elements. And uh, it's not integrated into the prototype we have right here, but um, we use basically small Peltiers next to one another, a cold one and a hot one. So when we pass current through it, it heats up a little small area of your skin and cools off the other one. And that also draws your attention there. And actually, there's a cool phantom effect that the students discovered from reading in the haptics literature that it creates the illusion of like burning or pain, but it doesn't actually hurt you. And so this is a, one of the things we often do in our research is we try to understand the capabilities of the human sensory system, in this case, the sense of touch, and then try to see if there are weird perceptual illusions that we can capitalize on to make haptic interfaces that are more compelling. So this one was really cool because um, just by putting a, a very hot and a very cold thing next to one another, not so hot that they burn you, um, but just warm and cold in such close proximity, it gives you the illusion that that area of your skin is burning. It doesn't actually hurt you. Um, but that, and that's really compelling. And so we have prototypes for that. This uh, nice vest that we created and we demonstrated at the Haptic Symposium conference last week for hundreds of participants doesn't include that because we weren't able to get it integrated into the prototype we were showing yet. But we, we have worked a lot on that idea also. We actually searched around trying to find someone who had been shot. And um, because, uh, I mean, as, an, as a designer, as a product designer, you really want to you want to try to make sure your system is as authentic as it can be. And specifically, we wanted to know um, what is the experience we're trying to duplicate. The students were not able to find anyone who had actually been shot here in Penn Engineering, which I'm grateful for. Um, but they did do a lot of reading on the internet to try to find firsthand accounts of veterans, mostly from the military, who had been shot and tried to um, understand what that was like. And it definitely is sharp and burning. So the students found one person who has been involved a lot in gun control and who works with a group uh, for people who have been shot. And so they were able to get secondhand accounts of this experience of being, of being shot. Once we finalized this prototype to include the gunshot sensations from the solenoids, the vibration sensations for being slashed and bumping, and also the thermal sensations for burning, we're planning to do a controlled user study where we test the effect of this additional haptic feedback onto the user in a first-person shooter game. Um, first, we want to compare just what's the experience, how, what changes does this invoke between not wearing any sort of garment playing the game and wearing our vest. Um, because we hypothesize that uh, including this additional feedback will make the experience much more immersive. So for example, we're guessing that the heart rate of the user will probably escalate and that they'll, there'll be more body motions, they'll be more active, maybe even burn more calories while they're playing this video game. The responses we've gotten have been phenomenal. People are really excited by the idea of having games that are more in interactive and more immersive that stimulate more than just your visual sense. Um, going beyond auditory to also uh, give you physical sensations that match reasonably well what you might expect. Actually, one of the coolest factors is the directional cues. So the vest has um, actuators positioned in different locations, and when the character in the game gets shot, we portray that um, impact in the correct location. And so say you're getting shot from the back left, then you know your attacker is behind you and to the left, and you can better counter their attack um, because these directional cues, that's something that's really not available um, in visual feedback or in audio feedback. And it's very natural. People respond to it um, very intuitively. They don't have to be taught. Uh, when you get hit in the back, the person who's shooting you is behind you. It's just so obvious. It matches up with your real experiences. So it's very easy for users to understand. The Tactile Gaming Vest has also been highlighted all over the internet. Um, from the conference, uh, IEEE Spectrum, which is a magazine um, from the IEEE Society, um, highlighted our demonstration on their website. And from there, it just went crazy. We were being shown on um, Gizmodo, and Slashdot, and Slashgear, and Uber Gizmo, and Make Magazine, and Wired Magazine. And, and that was a really exciting experience for the students and I, because so often the work that we do in the lab it doesn't go much beyond the lab. You write a paper about it, maybe, and some of your colleagues read it, and you're really proud of the work you do. But sometimes you do projects that really strike a nerve with the public. And that can be really exciting, because you're able to demonstrate something that's right at the cutting edge of technology, and then see that the public is really excited about this future prospect, about the, these capabilities that are still in the lab. I mean, you probably we wouldn't be able to sell this right now as it is as a commercial product, but it's within reach. It's something that within, there is already a commercial product that does something similar 
and we're, we've taken it to the next level. We're a research lab. And so this is the kind of product that could be out there in a few years.